Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm here today on the first day of the month of June to wish you a very happy Jesus Pride Month. As you can see behind me, you see the uh, rainbow flags, and uh, we are celebrating this month the fact that, uh, that, uh, that Jesus is our Lord, that Jesus is our Savior, that Jesus is the only Savior of the world, that Jesus Christ, oh my God, loves me. He loves you. He died for us. He rose again the third day, and he is our soon returning king. And, and every believer, uh, we are to pray to the Father, in the name of Jesus, and Jesus says, whatever you ask the Father, in my name, he will do it. And so I am so excited about what's going to take place this month. And you know why we are observing Jesus' pride here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. It is indeed, it is indeed a reaction to uh, this so-called Pride Month. Uh, somebody thought it was a good idea to dedicate the month of June to that which the God of the Bible calls an abomination. And I think that every church, every church, every believer should juxtapose that, should stand their ground and remind people that the God of the Bible made all of the months and that we should not dedicate a month, a day, nor an hour to ungodly, unbiblical, inhuman, unscriptural, unhealthy behavior. Now, isn't it amazing that veterans, veterans, People who get maimed, shot, and lose limbs. People who suffer uh, uh, PTSD and all these other things for our country gets a day. Isn't it amazing that we have Memorial Day and we uh, remember the dead that we lost in war? Is it, think about all of the uh, worthy people and groups that get a day. Uh, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day. Oh my, Easter is a day. Oh, we I know that we we go we go into the Christmas season, but Christmas is celebrated on a day, Thanksgiving Day, Easter Sunday. Now, why is it that we have given uh, behavior? That is anti-human. I call it anti-human simply because if all human beings practiced it, well, it would mean the extinction of the human race in less than 100 years. And, and, uh, and, and listen, not as a result of even the disease, and most certainly that would be a part of it, but simply put, men cannot procreate uh, having sex with men, nor women with women. So it is anti-human behavior. It's anti-God of the Bible behavior, for the Bible condemns it. And for that matter, uh, all of the major religions of the world uh, condemns this behavior. And yet today, in the name of being uh, inclusive, in the name of being progressive, we now celebrate the month of June. We have major retailers uh, like Target who have teamed with an LB, a trans Satanist. Now, who ever heard of that, Gary? A trans Satanist uh, to design clothing and stuff for babies, for children, and they're getting pushback, and and so Target is, has 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 removed uh, the uh, LBGTQ paraphernalia from the front door. At least now you can walk in. And it's not right there uh, glaring at you. I mean, that's the first thing you see. Now, this is the very same store that w would not put Merry Christmas in its store at Christmas time. So now, uh, but the, they hadn't done away with the, uh, the display. They just moved it to the back of the store. Now, it is the it is sincere prayer and desire of this preacher 
that that shoppers and I know Target is a, a great retailer, but you shoppers out there, you who name the name of Christ, be careful where you spend your money. Because with people like these people, the only thing that matters is dollars and cents. They they could care less about what we believe. They have shown us that they ca- they care nothing about what we think, how we feel, our religion. But I'll tell you what moves them: our money, our money, our foot traffic, our dollars. And I pray that you will put your conviction over convenience. I know that it is so convenient to walk into stores like uh, Target and there is everything you need right there. One stop shopping and you're in, you're out, boom, you're gone. It's convenient. It's a part of your uh, everyday life now. But you know what? There are times when things, uh, listen, uh, may have to inconvenience you. The, the words of the song says, uh, if Jesus go with me, I'll go. I'll go anywhere. It may be on uh, the mountain. It may be in the valley. But if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. And I consider it an honor, his cross to bear. So I'm praying that believers out there today, that consumers, that born again, spirit filled consumers. Now, I'm not talking about the lost. I'm not talking to the unsaved. I'm not talking to the ungodly. They don't even see the, see what the problem is. But I'm talking to the born again, the spirit filled, those who read the Bible, those who go to a church where the Bible is preached and taught, those who understand scripture. There's enough of us to control, to have power, to have influence when these corporations lose their minds. What they're counting on, they're counting on uh, us, they're counting on our being lazy. They're counting on our being stupid. They're counting on us pretending that we just don't know. So we go in and we, we behave in our sheepish manner and we do what is convenient for us and get get in and get out, and we're funding the very behavior that we're praying against. Now, I don't believe you ought to vote one way and pray another, and I don't believe you ought to spend your money one way and pray another. I think integrity is when everything in our lives aligns. So listen, listen, uh, call on the Lord about these things. Pray to God for our society. Seek the Lord that God will send revival and spend your money in the same direction that you're praying in. And if you do it, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, uh, you'll see results. I heard someone say this. We ought to work like the outcome depends on us and pray like the outcome depends on God. And if you put these two elements together and we're willing to work hard and sacrifice and then pray hard and trust God, I'm telling you, these are the key. this is the key to winning cultural victories and any other victory, any other battle you may have in your life. Now, I got a passage of scripture that I want to read to you because uh, I think the prophet Isaiah who prophesied during the time of Amos. You know, I've been talking about Amos of late. Uh, under the reign of King Jeroboam II. And during that time, uh, the northern kingdom was characterized by rebellion against God. Sounds like America. Spiritual laziness. Sounds like the American Christian. Oh, my idolatry. Uh, sounds just like this t- these times in which we're living and spiritual syncretism where we are bringing in all of these different religions, these different ideologies, these different things and mixing it with our worship of the God of the Bible. And Isaiah asked a powerful question in Isaiah chapter number one and verse 21. And I have this question for you. It says, how is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. It was full of justice. Righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers, thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone 
is on the take. Everyone loves gifts and follow after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. They're not fair to the poor. Neither doth the cause of the widows come to them. They have no concern for the disadvantaged in society. They have no concern for those who are in need. And the question is, how did the faithful city become a harlot? How did this happen? What took place? And and this is the question that we have to ask today. What has happened to America? What has happened to the American church? What has happened in our society? How has the faithful city become a harlot? And I believe that one of the answers to that question is found in Amos chapter number six and verse number one. Amos says, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. You know what happened? We got lazy. <laughs> we got small. Yes. Oh my. The, the 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 suits, the homes, the blessings. Oh my. The accolades from the world. A little praise from the world. All that stuff, man. The next thing you know, brother Garrett, we were just happy and content, and we dared not rock the boat and 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 get the world's dander up. And oh my, make them uh, upset with us because guess what? Some of them worldly members may leave. Some of the worldly people who've been praising you may stop praising you. Some of the some of the politicians who visit your church every Sunday and sit up there in their pious, righteous uh, 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 demeanor may all of a sudden stop visiting your church. And you can't have that. So you know what we've done? We've stopped praying. We've stopped standing for righteousness. We've stopped declaring God's word. We've stopped declaring that the God of the Bible is the only true and living God. We've stopped declaring the righteousness of God. We, we, we spent our uh, ministry mainly preaching and teaching about materialism. Oh, we, 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 we want likes and, uh, uh, views so bad that we're willing to compromise our faith. And by the way, while I'm talking about that, just by the way, I just want to say this, and this is to any preacher, anybody, anyone. Um, and I normally don't weigh into these things, but uh, I just want to speak to the principle of a thing. A husband and a wife can dance, as far as I'm concerned, any way they want to. Uh, they can celebrate any, any way that they choose. But I tell you what you can't do. You can't dance with your wife. You can't have her uh, twerking and all of that and uh, backing up on you and all that and then put it on the internet and post it but then get upset if people have something negative to say about it. Why post it? Why, what is this new, um, I don't know, this new contagion, this new, uh, this the idea that Everything you do, everything you do has to be posted. I'm on my way to the grocery store. I'm on my way to the hospital. I'm on my way to the bathroom. Oh, me and my wife, we are celebrating my birthday. She's celebrating it in a particular way. I want everyone to see it. Now, when you do things like that, regardless to who you are, when, when comments come in that you like, it's all right. But when comments come in that you don't like, you say, well, I'm just minding my own business. It's not your business. Tend to your own business. Well, you made it everyone's business when you posted it. So how about this? How about this? Uh, uh, wives love your husbands and husbands love your wife. But behavior and things uh, that would display her in an inappropriate way. And we all know that, that just because you're married, and I've been married 42 years, just because you're married, you're married, that doesn't mean that there aren't things that take place between married people that are supposed to be kept private, that are supposed to be kept from the general public for one reason out of respect for your spouse, just out of respect for her. You, you don't want me or the rest of the guys, oh I'm, oh, I'm thinking you didn't, to see her 
even if she's dancing in a sexually suggestive manner where she's throwing it and dropping it and shaking it, that's for you. That is for you to see and for you to enjoy and, my God, be on cloud 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so forth and so on in private. Because not everything that humans do are designed to be viewed. And I think that uh, we might need to have a class on what should be viewed and what should not be viewed. And sometimes what makes perfectly reasonable, good, sound, enjoyable, pleasurable, righteous behavior wrong is when you display it for everyone else to view it who has no business seeing that whatsoever. Just wanted to mention that, um, uh, but I think that we have gone the wrong way. I want to encourage preachers to preach the word of God with power and authority. Let's stand on the word and let's enjoy this Jesus Pride Month. I'm Pastor, I hope you have your rainbow flag up in your church. Don't be afraid to display the rainbow flag. Don't be this, uh, afraid to display it. Just explain it. Just explain. From time to time, I have to explain to my audience, you know, this guy preach, he stands against this, that, and the other. But I don't get those rainbows, man. Uh, listen, I apologize to you. I apologize to you on behalf of the whole body of Christ. I apologize to you for every for every every preacher who's been in your life, whatever denomination you're in, I apologize on their behalf. Because the fact that you don't get these rainbow flags behind me is a failure of your church. It's a failure of mine. It's a failure of the ministry. We should have said from day one, you know, I did, but not everybody, that we're not going to let these people take God's precious rainbow. We're not going to give that ground, but we did. And so now the rainbow is not synonymous with the God of the Bible. It's not synonymous with the book of Genesis. It's synonymous with LBG. T, Q, and the rest of the alphabet that go with that. And when Christians see a rainbow display, Christians now no longer even think about the promise that God made and what the Lord did uh, and, and, and the significance of it. And so I apologize to you. We failed on that one. But uh, hey, hey guys, the game's not over. The game's not over. The game's not over. We still have time. Stand for God's rainbow. Fight for this country. Let's see if we can't do something to make this city that was once a holy place where righteousness dwell. Let's see if we can't do something to make it less of a harlot and more righteous. And I believe this. The key to doing it is um, stop being so lazy. You can't just protect your own turf. You can't just cover your own behind. You can't just preach. You can't only preach uh, safe sermons where the congregation will just laugh and feel smug and feel righteous. Man, you're playing music on the Titanic. Let's stand on God's word. Now, I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for... Bible study. <laughs> Man, I don't know why I laughed that thing. I just think that it's the most wonderful thing that people will get excited about studying the scripture. I love you with the love of the Lord and may God's choice blessings be yours. Make it a great day.